वेलकम टू द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन कोर्स टुडे वी लर्न द ऑप्टिकल एम्पलीफायर सो वी हैव लर्न अर्लियर दैट ए राइज टाइम बजट एंड ए पावर बजट सो वी से दैट फॉर ए गिवन लिंक वी से दैट दिस वन इज अबाउट योर सोल then this is about the length of the optical fiber and this one is about your detector it can be a pin or avalanche photo detector so in that power budget we say that what will be the minimum power received or what will be the power level received at this receiver so that receiver will respond to the given particular information so that is about we say a power budget and that minimum power level received for what value of the length of the fiber so that is about so means we say that for example 1000 km of length minimum power level received will be x y z value suppose if we increase the length so whether that link will satisfied for that particular power level that is the link power budget so answer for this no because that power budget is designed for the given length of the optical fiber then similarly we have the rise time budget and in that rise time budget so we need to know that what will be the a pulse rate or what will be the signal rate we are transmitting here and at the end what will be the losses for this particular given pulse so according to that we say that a rise time budget for your link so in which transmitter rise time we have a receiver rise time and it between the optical fiber there is a rise time so now for a given particular link length of this link what will be the area rise time budget required so that will be depending upon the rise time of a transmitter rise time of receiver and mostly we have the distortion due to the optical fiber so that is a link optical power link or uh, optical fiber link and then we say that for the given length that means we will be with the power level for the given length that will be the rise time budget now another concept here to increase the power level so we can use a repeater in between the given link so means suppose we have the length of the optical fiber is supposed to be 1000 km and we want to carry out our communication link for the more than that 1000 km so in that case we need to use a repeater there so that role of the repeater is to amplify the optical signal and that repeater performs the conversion of a photon to electron then electrical amplification of a signal then retiming then pulse shaping and then electron to photon conversion so that is a simple repeater is nothing but it has a conversion of whichever the optical line link comes there so that's why it has a detector means photon to electron conversion then after detecting the signal the electrical signal we are receiving then amplify that electrical signal then retiming then pulse shaping and then convert that electrical signal to the photon so likewise that is about a conversion takes place that is just similar to the transmitter and receiver so now if we consider this particular process of that repeater so it is based on that what will be the operation of this particular link on the in terms of a wavelength 
and then uh, we say that a data transmission again it is depending upon that what will be the wavelength there so now suppose if you want a data transmission for the high speed then we need to use a multiple wavelength for the transmission so it's not a single wavelength because if you consider that a laser source or light emitting diode for the given length so then we need to use a multiple wavelength and then we transmit it so for this multiple wavelength we will achieve the higher data rate so then we doesn't have the way to use that repeater for those particular multiple wavelength amp multiple wavelength input here and another example is about we have the repeater there if supposed to be we are using the repeater then we could not perform the high speed transmission with a highest data rate so that's why we need to introduce another component in the optical fiber and that component will increase the speed of your data transmission as well as if supposed to be any delay are there because of that introducing the repeater there may be a propagation delay so optical amplifier that will eliminate the propagation delay and then optical amplifier will produce or it it will be useful for the high data rate there so now we can use a optical amplifier for the multiple wavelength or for the larger spectral band and that spectral band is about a 30 nanometer or it can be a more there. so the solution for the link for a higher data rate or to avoid the propagation delay so we can use a optical amplifier so there are the three types of optical amplifier so we can say that a semiconductor optical amplifier then a doped fiber amplifier so we'll use that dope fiber means iridium dope that material iridium material is used for the application so some books they say that iridium dope fiber amplifier then a raman amplifier now these are the three basic optical amplifier that are used for the higher data rate of a application now we have seen that earlier that is laser in a laser what happen we are using a pump source for the avalanche process now the same principle is used in the optical amplifier that used in a laser diode so in that optical amplifier we are using a external pumping source to increase the gain of the amplifier there so that's why we say that if some dopants are used so that's why we can say that a iridium dope fiber amplifier and that amplifier generally it is used in a c band or we can say that it has a specific range of the wavelength and that will work for this optical communication network so we learn that one by one that optical amplifier so before going in detail about each and every optical amplifier we should know that what are the basic applications and what are the various types of optical amplifier so now generally that a amplifier are used 
for the long distance communication you can say that because we have the long links are present in ac so that's why we can say that the optical amplifiers are used in a ultra long undersea link we can say that a ultra long undersea link optical network so that is about the use of a optical amplifier so we can use that optical amplifier for the longer distance undersea communication there even again it can be used for the point to point links and then if you see that how this links are work because we can say that it's about a, a it is about a long distance link even we can say that is about it can be work for the a short distance link so means we say that this optical amplifier are used for a given particular power budget or for this given particular rise time budget so means we can use the optical amplifier for increasing the whatever the in at power at the input side or whatever the power at the output side means it is just like a optical light is amplified here so we can specify that what are the various amplifiers are there and that amplifiers are used for what particular purpose so we generally say that it is for the undersea link long ultra long under ceiling again we can say that it can be useful for the a high speed communication or we can say that it will be useful for the wide bandwidth okay you can say that a wide wavelength application or we can say that is useful for the high speed okay that is about the your amplifier so means for a given particular line or sorry for a given particular link that optical fiber optical amplifiers are used there so there are the a basic basically there are the three class of optical amplifier so one we can see that in line optical amplifier so in the in line optical amplifier then another is about a pre amplifier then a third is about a, a power amplifier now in the case of a inline amplifier it is just like optical optical amplifier is used as a repeater there okay so we can say that we have the diagram for this inline optical amplifier here is a optical transmitter then this one is about a inline amplifier sorry draw this length of the li line will be larger okay so we can say we can draw this way okay you can say that optical this one is about a inline amplifier so now this particular optical amplifier that is about inline amplifier that is used instead of a, a repeater there because because if we are using the link sorry if we are using that a repeater so that repeater is useful for the only a, a single 
mode link okay if it has a single mode link then a repeater is to be used and then for the single mode link so that that has a large dispersion if we are using the a repeater there so we, we can out because generally we, what we can say that there is a propagation delay and we say that for a link there is a dispersion then we can use a repeater and then because in using that repeater there may be attenuation because we are using repeater in between the line then there may be a connector loss there may be other losses there so then what we what happened here because we are using the repeater for role of a repeater is about conversion of your photon to electron then electron to the photon likewise so that is about the role so in the case of a optical amplifier inline optical amplifier so it is just like it amplify the signal and without a transmission loss and using this inline optical amplifier so it will increase the distance between this transmitter and a receiver there so if we are using supposed to be a repeater repeater is nothing but a regenerative repeater so that regenerative repeater supposed to be we are using so that regenerative repeater the role is of that regenerative type repeater that is it will convert that photon to electron this will get that electrical signal okay then amplify that electrical signal okay after that we need to amplify the electronic that signal then amplified signal is again converted to the electron to photon okay and then it will be transmitted so in between that the process there is a delay again there may be a loss so but if we consider that inline amplifier so then that loss can be minimized there and because of using that inline amplifier so we can increase the distance between that regenerative repeaters in between the link there so now we have this inline amplifier in between the optical fiber link so this is about your transmission system we have this the optical fiber if we consider that a fiber here we have the signal length is large now you can see that signal level reduced but after using this optical fiber we can increase the level of the signal then here we are receiving that a level like so that is about a role of this inline optical amplifier the next is about a preamplifier a second is about a preamplifier that preamplifier means nothing but before a receiver we have this optical transmitter and then in between that this is about your fiber okay otherwise this is about your optical fiber so this is about your optical fiber then in between that we need to use that a optical amplifier that is about a g to that g means what to improve the gain of an opti optical amplifier to improve the gain of the system here then we have this optical receiver that is nothing but what we can say a preamplifier now if you see here we have this the transmission signal transmitted signal and here at this input it is about a low here but after using this signal get amplified we share a optical signal 
is amplified here. Here we have the optical signal is propagating through this fiber, means light is propagating through the fiber. Then at the receiver, that light is a low. Then to increase the level of that light, we are using this preamplifier. Okay, here. So that is we can say that before receiving the signal or before the detector, we are using this preamplifier just like to increase the power of this power of this uh, link and that power will reach to this optical receiver. So means before immediately before that receiver that amplifier is used. So it is just like a booster amplifier or it is called as a preamplifier. Okay, so before that it is used means at the end of this optical link or uh, before or front end of this optical receiver, this amplifier is used. So that's why whichever the low signals are there or weak signal are there that will reach to the optical receiver, that weak signal get amplified before reach to this optical detector. With that weak signal means nothing but a photon that is about a photon here. Okay, then it will be that that light is get amplified before reach to this optical receiver. And then because of that, it will improve the signal to noise ratio. Okay, the, now we can say that here that is at a front end of this optical receiver, this optical amplifier is used. So now this is about we can say a preamplifier and because using this particular preamplifier it will provide a large gain factor and a broader bandwidth large gain factor and a broader bandwidth okay that is about your a preamplifier so next is about a power amplifier. Now in the case of a power amplifier, we can see that we are using that a power amplifier either at the transmission side or in between that a line so that is about a power amplifier just amplify the a signal label so we can write we can draw here optical transmitter then immediately after that we are using that amplifier here then we have the long length of the optical fiber and then you can say that optical receiver now that is about a long fiber link now op this optical transmitter supposed to be signal level is likewise so due to introducing this amplifier here, then signal level will be increased. And that signal is propagating through this optical fiber. So this one is about a block of, you can say that, this is nothing but what we can say, a block of a power, ampli power amplifier. or we can say that a booster amplifier okay you can say that a power amplifier you can say that it is about a booster amplifier it is useful for the a long length so this is just like a, that amplifier is placing immediately after this optical transmitter and if 
that means here we have say that amplifier is immediately after this transmitter now the use of this amplifier to increase the it transmitted power here you can say that the optical power output optical transmitter output and after using this amplifier the transmitted power will be increased here so now this will be useful for this long distance communication so this may be in terms of a 10 to 100 km of a distance based on this optical amplifier and again the fiber loss why we say that fiber loss because they have there are some limitations of the optical fiber ampli fiber optical fiber because if we are in increasing the optical power inside this fiber amplifier at certain level then there may be a scattering so that's why to avoid the scattering we need to consider that a a fiber loss also so that that is about it your power amplifier then the optical amplifier can be used this one you can see here that is lan booster amplifier this one we can see a fiber optical fiber line or optical fiber link here and then we supposed to be consider that a star coupler these are about the multiple receiver or you can say that receiver station okay these are about the receiver station so the role of this star coupler means we have this a uh, optical fiber link here and then that output of this fiber here before that before that amplifier it is low here then we can supposed to be increase the optical power level of the signal there and then here it will reach a certain level of the power there so that it can be useful for the transmission there so this is about a we can say that a lan booster amp amplifier here so that is generally it is to be used in a local area network and that will amplify the signal there and again uh, because of is splitting the power here so there may be a loss that's why before the signal splitting so we need to increase the power level so that's why a lan booster amplifier is used then sufficient power will be received at this receiver station that is about a power amplifier so now we will go ahead with amplifier so then we will see that what is the basic operation of optical amplifier before going in detail about this optical amplifier we'll see that what is the basic operation of this optical amplifier now we have say we have say that earlier there are the three types of optical amplifier we say that a semiconductor opti optical amplifier there we have this a dope fiber amplifier and the a raman amplifier now this all these amplifier if you see that they are working based on that what will be the incident power and they will increase the power level at certain level so means in a given particular link that opti 
optical amplifier increases the power level of that incident light through the stimulated emission or we can say that a optical power transfer so in the case of a semiconductor optical amplifier that is about we can say semiconductor optical amplifier soa and here we if we use a iridium do fiber amplifier and in this particular two amplifier that make mechanism for a amplification of this optical power so they are using the a stimulated emission for the amplification of the optical signal so in this particular amplifier that the population inversion technique is used and that population inversion technique is useful for the stimulated emission occurs inside that active medium of the optical fiber amplifier so we'll see here that how this stimulated emission takes place in that optical amplifier that stimulated emission that is takes place in this optical amplifier and that stimulated emission is similar to the laser that is used for the population inversion so now we consider here a optical signal and how this work okay how this stimulated emission takes place in the optical fiber we'll see here we have the optical signal now optical put a signal and that optical signal input which is propagating through this we about optical signal that is propagating through this a coupler here and then it have some active medium and after that a coupler and then we'll get that a amplified signal now this one is about a input signal we say there is about is input signal likewise we say input signal it is propagating through this active medium and then we'll get that a amplified signal so for this active medium we require a pump source similarly that pump source is used in this uh, a laser and all so that's why we can transmit the signal or that uh, population innovation takes place in that particular active region there so if you see that here optical amplifier so whatever the incoming signals are there that incoming signal as it is propagating through this active medium okay and then we'll get that a amplified signal so that optical signal propagating through this active medium so that in that active medium it will absorb that a signal in this active medium and then here we have the energy supplied by this a pump source and then that a sorry uh, that optical signal propagating through the optical with that active medium so that will be amplified because of that pump source provide that energy to this optical signal which energy provided by this pump source that will be absorbed in this active medium and that will be given to this optical signal there so means what we can say that we have this a pump source 
that pump source will supply the energy to the active medium is in a in a active medium there are the electrons present and because of that energy given to this electron then the energy of those electrons will be increases to the higher level and then a population inversion takes place in this active medium there and then because of that one signal photon if it is propagating through this optical uh, through this active in a active medium here so then that photon will trigger to the to be triggered by this excited electrons and then population inversion will be takes place in this particular medium there and then a stimulated emission takes place and that electron will drop their energy level and that photon will increase that energy level so that's why that amplification takes place so here that mechanism of this amplification in this active medium that is we can can see in the semiconductor optical amplifier as well as the iridium dope optical amplifier so that is about the basic operation of this optical amplifier so means we can say that a transfer of this optical signal energy level to the higher energy level due to this active medium because pump source provide the energy to the electron the electron provide the energy to the photon so that's why that optical signal get amplified there so this this one is about a basic principle of operation of this optical amplifier and that is used in the semiconductor optical amplifier and iridium dope fiber amplifier so they have the active medium and they will be used for the amplification there but in the case of a raman amplification so in which what happen they will transfer the optical power from the high power pump wavelength to the light wave signal at a, a longer wavelength so in that a mechanism of this raman amplification they are amplifying the signal without the population in population inversion process we will see in detail about one by one a optical amplifier and if you consider that a, all the amplifier they are used in the l band s band and a c band there and we can consider that a raman amplifier it is just like a based on this a non linear effect so that is called as a stimulated raman scattering that is occurring the optical fiber so we are using the external pumping here in the semiconductor optical amplifier semiconductor optical amplifier okay soa here and if you consider that it has a just like a a laser so we have seen that in a laser indium gallium arsenide the laser that is about the laser and that principle of that active medium operating such a way that that operates in that indium gallium arsenide laser there the construction of a laser diode if you see that the same construction is there for this optical amplifier and this semiconductor optical amplifier it will be used for the in narrow band or it will be used in the narrow band and that will be from 
nanometer to 1650 nanometer. So because we can say that we can use the semiconductor optical amplifier with a narrow wavelength band to the larger band, okay, ultra wide band. Okay, so that's about we can say that the semiconductor optical amplifier. If we see that there are the various bands, that is about O band, C band, S band. L band. So likewise, there are the different different bands, and they have the different operating optical wavelength, and that optical wavelength. So for this semiconductor optical amplifier, generally used for the different band or a different band of operation. There, but if you consider that a iridium dope amplifier, that will be work only for the a specific operating wavelength okay we'll see that one by one there so here the same mechanism is used that is about it has a active medium in the semiconductor optical amplifier and then along with that it has a, a feedback mechanism inside this particular active medium they have the feedback mechanism and the construction of this semiconductor optical amplifier, it is a similar to the a laser diode. And it has a active length or active region or active medium. It has a length of L. Okay, we can say that length L, that we can say that is about the width W and the height D here. And it has a both the end phase it we, we can say that here R1 and R2 means in which it is about one is about we can say that a mirror. Okay, so this one is about reflector and it is it, it is nothing but act as a act as a refractor. So that is about we have these two facets of this particular active medium means two mirror, one is act as a reflector and another is act as a refractor there. So how this semiconductor diode works according to those reflectivities? So if we consider that it has a 0.3 reflectivity, okay, for this particular so somewhere it is reflector and another is about a reflective there. So likewise, we can consider that a semiconductor optical amplifier and uh, that a low, low reflectivity is that is in that low reflectivity is in that active medium that can be obtained by depositing the thin layer of a silicon oxide or a silicon nitride or titanium oxide on the end facets of this silly semiconductor optical amplifier. So we need a, a pumping source to create the population inversion in the semiconductor optical amplifier. So then according to the rate of that particular pumping source, we can find out that what will be the gain or amplifier gain of the empty optical amplifier. We can write here the gain is nothing but what? PS out and a PS in here, what will be the supplied power input and the output here? You can say that according to that we can calculate that gain, and then gain is depending upon that what will be the from the input side, which we can say that what will be the pumping source is used in the optical amplifier there. So that is just like it has a specific pumping source and then that sem semiconductor optical amplifier is to be used. So if you consider that again and the input signal that is in a dBm, so we can say that minus 60, minus 50, minus 40, minus 30, 
minus 20 minus 10 0 and 10 here you can see that 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 likewise so if you consider that again here that gain of this optical amplifier is is just like based on that what will be the input signal we are using if that input signal is small there the gain will be increases that gain is in a db and this one is about a, a saturation region of this optical amplifier for this given particular input level of a power so we supposed to be use this optical amplifier so this is about a g0 that is about a 3 db gain so we can calculate that gain in terms of what will be the amplifier amplification at saturation and what will be the power supplied input natural logarithm of g0 by that is about a g0 is nothing but a small signal gain and that is for this given values we can calculate there so that is about a semiconductor optical amplifier we have seen today